I got to know Hugh through um, Elton, I suppose. I, yeah, and Paul, you know, because there was the French connection. But um, he was he was a very uh, generous player, I thought. Mm -hmm. He'd always sort of bring something that enabled something else to happen, you know what I mean? Very quietly kind of... Um, and, you know, it was very interesting me at, at Phil's thing, mm -hmm. meeting his brother. That was, that was quite good. That project you did called Numéro de Vol? Yeah. With uh, Steve Franklin and uh, Charles Hayward. That's uh, right. That came out quite a few years after it. Yeah, I mean... So how I, did that come about? Well, just you said, do you want to come down? I've, I've got some things that I've prepared, as it were. Or, or just actually it was sort of open. Actually the playing was open. Where we just sort of improvised, really. But he then sort of started to then edit from that. And um, then started adding his own things where, where he felt he could sort of embellish it and move it, move it along. So, you know, there were, it was a kind of um, mixture of live and prepared from Hugh's point of view. So, you know, I went down to his place in Canterbury uh, and Charles was on it and, yeah, Steve, and, and then they just, we just ran the tape, I say, just ran it and see what came up. And then he took it from there and... With almost no preparation, I mean, uh, uh, no. just plug everything in? And yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it, it wasn't sort of uh, like, you know, we're going to play, you know, any specific, we just let it, let it run. And that's what I mean, I mean, I think Hugh's kind of used to that. He, he's, he had a, an affinity with that, you know, mm -hmm. to let the thing run and see what comes up. And then probably spend quite some time being sort of selective and where he chose to sort of put it into another form, you know. Um, Was that the only time you actually played with you, uh, other than like you played on a couple of his uh, studio projects as well? Um, but... Yeah, I, I think that was the, the only real main one. I mean, I did, um, there was a tribute for Elton's thing at Le Mans, I did that. Um, with Sophie and um, oh yeah, sure in Goober. Paris as well. I was there. Yeah, um, yeah. And you replaced Elton in that. Yeah, uh, that was quite nerve wracking because I wasn't sure. I was trying to play with people that I hadn't played with before, and it was yeah, trying to get you know into that. But. So of them, you, you'd only ever played with you, uh, n never with Simon or Sophia. Not before, no, no, no. I knew Sophie like because I mean Paul was you know. Yeah. Over in France with Sophie, that that had sort of changed. But but I knew of it because she because she used to come over and then work with Tony Levin as well. Uh, so there was a kind of yeah, uh, you know, amazing piano player. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I hadn't before. No, not before. Yeah, so I can imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah, as well as playing that music just a few months after Elton had passed away and yeah I mean it was um, I, it was it was I'm still quite sort of uh, yeah after that yeah he got that was it was a bit raw because yeah, it was it was quite it was quite soon after yeah because I, I think because actually those gigs were booked for that's Elton absolutely right so, yeah. so you know I was then to, you know I was staying in Paris and with Marino and you know and it was all still very much yeah uh, can't rule, you know. um, So yeah, there was a kind of thing about that, you know, sort of stepping into some sort of well, situation that had already been kind of thought of in a different way, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which was wasn't altogether easy. <laughs> <laughs>